Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zunky, and welcome to a new top 10 video, finally. And in this one, we're going to be going over the best 10 resource dungeons in game. These are dungeons that you unlock with your dungeoneering skill. As you level up, you'll progressively unlock more and more of them. Typically, they get better as your level increases, but not always, and that's the main purpose of this video. How I decided to rank them is based on if I met someone and they knew absolutely nothing about resource dungeons, and I knew absolutely nothing about their playstyle and what would be best beneficial for them, this is the order in which I would tell them about what I would consider most useful to someone I know nothing about to the least useful out of these 10 at least. So, also, I had this suggested to me by one of my friends in game, so I do not have a comment to show you guys, but make sure to leave your comments for the next top 10 video, and if I pick one of them, it will be shown. So we'll go ahead and get into this top 10 resource dungeons in game that I would recommend for you guys to check out if you have not already. Number 10 is the Blue Dragon Dungeon in the Taverly Dungeon, and the reason why this one is useful is for a couple reasons. First of all, it's the best place to kill blue dragons unless you run a slayer task from Curadel in which you can kill them in the Curadel's dungeon, which you probably want to do because it's really easy to access and you can also gain ferocious rings while in that dungeon as drops, which is nice, but if you want to kill them off of task or if you are assigned them as a lower level slayer master, or even if you need to pick up blue dragon scales if you want to do that for profit, it is about 1.5 mil an hour gathering blue dragon scales if you happen to have the agility level, which is 70 agility to get through the pipe. Or if you are an Iron Man account, I've accessed this dungeon many, many times on my Iron Man to gather blue dragon scales. Very useful for that as well. I remember doing Slayer tasks here back in the day because Curdle's dungeon was really, really crowded when it first came out in the Blue Dragon section, so I used to do Slayer tasks here. And this is a really great place to go. Again, lots of those Blue Dragon scale spawns, which can be nice, and plenty of Blue Dragons to kill as well. Notice the completely legitimate player already here killing the blue dragons he knows what's up overall very helpful dungeon for those mid-tier players and people looking to do slayer tasks number nine on this list is the mining guild dungeon and this one does have a couple requirements first of all only 45 dungeoneering that's not too high very very manageable if you do want to mine but you also need 60 mining in order to access the mining guild which you should have because the only main reason to go here is to mine the runite ores and to my understanding this is either the best or one of the best places in the entire game to mine the runite ores as i found while trying to quick hop to find a runite ore world it took about 10 hops in order to find one where the rune rocks respawn people do use this dungeon in order to mine rune ores which can be a fairly solid way of making money and this is one of the best places to mine runite ores because there's three spawns as well as it's fairly close to a bank so it doesn't take too long to bank you can just pop over to the falador east bank doesn't take too long at all and this is a really easy dungeon to access if you are looking to make a little bit of money through mining and also probably one of the more used resource dungeons in game as well number eight on the list is the brimhaven resource dungeon and this one can be very very handy for slayer tasks and you'll see why in just a second but the requirements to access it are fairly high you do need level 80 dungeoneering and there's also an extremely handy magical barrier to pass but you do need the elite Daemonheim aura in order to access that, so that requires all of the Daemonheim tasks done. Obviously some very high requirements, which is why it happened to be so low on the list. There's a handy shortcut that you can access as well to get through the Brimhaven dungeon very quickly. Unfortunately, this does require yet another elite task set done. You have to have the Karamja Gloves 4, so some very high requirements associated with that. One of the major ones is 91 Rune Crafting. Not everyone has that, and I fully understand that, again, why it's so low on the list. But you don't need the gloves to get through the Brimhaven dungeon. It just takes a little bit longer if you don't have that. And then there's a level 33 agility shortcut, I believe, to squeeze through from the red dragons into the area with the metal dragons. But anyway, once you get to the resource dungeon, this is the best place in game in order to do your steel and iron dragon tasks. And the reason why is because in Curadel's dungeon, you only have four spawns. And it can be difficult to find a world at times. And also, if you do even happen to find a world, you can kill out the spawns so quickly that you will have to wait in order for the dragons to spawn, especially if you're using abilities like Sunshine or Metamorphosis. And you'll just kill out the spawns too quickly, but there's more spawns here, so you don't have to wait for dragons to spawn, which is really nice. And also, you can access the Mithril Dragons, again, with the Elite Daemonheim Aura. And what's great about this is this is the best place in the game to kill Mithril Dragons because there's four spawns close together. If you kill them in the Ancient Cavern, the best spot only has three spawns to close together, and you have the same problem with the Steel and Iron Dragons where you can kill them out too quickly and you have to wait a few seconds for one to spawn. It's just a little bit faster here if you do have those Karamja Gloves and the Daemonheim Aura, so I do my 
personal mithril dragon task here. I'd recommend that you do as well if you have the requirements. Really nice dungeon for that. Number seven on the list is the Hellhound Dungeon, and this is yet another resource dungeon within the much larger Taverly Dungeon. And this one is also very, very useful for an extremely simple reason. So if you have ever wanted to do a Hellhound Slayer task or just trained there because it's really AFK melee XP and a lot of people are into that and you've ever tried to find a world on the Hellhound Dungeon at peak times during the weekend or something like that, you'll understand exactly what I mean. It's a very popular place to train because it's AFK. You can use the Guthans armor and Bunyip and you'll be completely fine. You can just wait here providing your defense level is decent of course and let the Hellhounds attack you. They stay aggressive for I believe 10 to 15 minutes and then you can just leave the resource dungeon and re-enter and they'll be aggressive again. So it requires very, very little attention, and it's quite good attack XP. You can get up to around 200k, even more than that, at higher stats with better weapons. Just chilling here and doing your homework or whatever, and just letting your character go to town on the Hellhounds. I was somehow able to find a resource dungeon world the very first try with no one else here. Believe me, that's not all that common. So you can kill them really, really fast. They have barely any HP, and you just want to make yourself a nice spot where you have three or four Hellhound spawns attacking you, and the resource dungeon can support about two people per world. But overall, great place to do your Hellhound tasks and great place to AFK. It's really popular as well, which is why it earned itself a decent spot on this list. Number six on this list has a very, very high spot for such a low level dungeon, but it's extremely handy. And the main reason why the Dwarven dungeon is something I hold in such high regard is because of its amazing property of having a bank deposit box within it making it the best place to mine iron in the game if you're planning on banking your iron ores. If you're planning on just power mining and dropping the iron ores, there are better places to go, but this is by far the best if you're a low level mining, trying to get up to level 70 mining or so, and you want to make a little bit of profit while you're doing it. And this is by far the best place to go. So make sure you have 15 dungeoneering before you start your mining, and then you can head over to the Dwarven Mine, and there's an area with three iron rocks very, very close together, so you can mine them pretty easily as long as you can find an empty world. And then there's a deposit box just a couple of steps away within the resource dungeon. I personally have brought about four accounts to level 70 mining, and this is what I have done for all four of them, is mined right at this very spot in the resource dungeon, partially because I'm cheap, and also if you are an Iron Man or something like that, then the iron ores are incredibly useful for you, so you probably want to hang on to them. And then in the resource dungeon itself, this is one of the best places to mine coal until you get up to level 77 where you can mine the concentrated coal. And if you have a Damonheim Aura 1, you can access the magical barrier which has some additional mithril and adamantite rocks if you have any need for those ores. So really good place to mine all of these, really close to a bank deposit box. It's a great little resource dungeon. Number five on this list is the Calgarian Dungeon, and this is the other resource dungeon on the Damonheim Peninsula itself. It requires level 90 Dungeoneering in order to access it, and also level 90 Slayer in order to be assigned to the Calgarians as a task from Morvran or Curdal, but you can decide to kill them off of task as well if you're going for the titles or just want some awesome magic XP. The main problem with these demons is they're very hard to kill unless you have one of the following. Tier 9 in melee is decent, but the main way that you want to go with these demons is by using magic, so you want at least tier 80 magic or tier 90 magic with some really decent gear and potions and stats and all of that because these things are hard to kill they have an extremely high defense level so great task if you are a higher level one of my favorites although this will not be the last slayer related resource dungeon you'll see on this list there are some better ones but this is a really really good one i personally love using either seismics or noxious staff at the calgarians it just tears them to shreds and they have one of the best slayer xp rates in the game if you manage to own one out of those two weapons and it's decent even if you don't another reason why the calgarians earned the generous spot on the list is you do have to kill them for a long time to gain five calgarian title drops in order for the trimmed completionist cape or if you just like to collect them this is the title i wear personally in game i think it's pretty cool there's five of them total i have had the first four and if i ever wanted to go for trim one day i'd have to get all five and on top of all of this it's some fairly decent profit as well you can get uncut onyxes as a drop along with tons of rune items and noted herbs 
whole bunch of nice stuff. Number four on this list is the Dragon Tooth Island Dungeon, or as it's more commonly known as the Celestial Dragon Dungeon, or if you want to be cool the way that I lovingly refer to it as the Celery Dragon Dungeon. So you do need 67 Dungeoneering in order to access this dungeon, but that is not the main requirement. You also have to complete the Master Quest one of a kind, which if you haven't done that quest yet, you should really consider doing it. It gives some pretty decent XP as well as one of the best necklaces in game in the Dragon Rider necklace, as well as access to this awesome, awesome dungeon where you can be assigned Celestial Dragons as a Slayer task, one of the best Slayer tasks in the game in my opinion. And the reason why they're so good is for a couple reasons. For one, it's amazing XP. If you're using a Steel Titan in tier 90 range, you can get up to around 200k Slayer XP per hour on task, which is just awesome. Very good range XP as well, and you get a ton of charms. They drop two Crimson Charms nearly every single kill, and they're very, very weak to range. Dragon Bane Bolts can also be used effectively here if you don't have higher level range weapons. And you don't take any damage if you use Super Antifires, just like Steel and Iron Dragons. So, a very easy and relaxing task. One of the best ones in game. Make sure to check these out if you have not yet. And you will not regret one second of it. Number three on this list is the Edamu Dungeon, the first out of the two dungeons in Elf City, and there might be another one coming up pretty quickly, but this is yet another Slayer Task Dungeon. That's three dungeons in a row which contain Slayer monsters. What's going on? Rest in peace, Monkelzunkey's objectivity, clearly, but this is also the highest requirement dungeon in the game, and there's more than just Slayer creatures in here. Yes, you can fight the Edamus, which are one of the best money-making methods in the entire game if you have the insanely high dungeoneering requirement in order to access it dungeon but you can also go in every single day and withdraw a reward from the motherload mod i got really lucky while recording this video and managed to pick myself up a potion recipe i only need one more for the completion escape requirement which is pretty awesome I've gotten all of those recipes from the Motherload Maw every day. So you can only kill the Edamus on Slayer Task. If you don't have a Slayer Task, unfortunately you can't kill them. But it's very worth it if you happen to get one because those are bank loot. And there's also yet another Crystal Flecked Sandstone Rock where you can mine an additional 25 a day if you're into that. But it is quite far away from the bank. So that's up for you to decide. Overall, just a really handy dungeon and a great Slayer Task as well, which I'm a fan of. If you couldn't tell by now. Number two on this list is the other dungeon within Elf City, the Garage Resource Dungeon. And this is my personal favorite resource dungeon in the game. Now, depending on the type of player you are, this might not be that useful or it might be incredibly useful. And I'll explain why in just a second. But first of all, it's only 95 dungeoneering requirement, which is high, but definitely a lot more reasonable than the Edamu Dungeon at 115. So you can access it every day and you can withdraw a card from the Garage Horde Stalker one per day. And if you get a Yak card, that will give you a free potion recipe in your next time that you do dungeoneering, which is nice. And some of the other cards that he gives you can also provide some decent benefits. So the reason why this dungeon is so good is if you are someone like me that has a variable schedule and you just are not able to get on every day for reset time in order to go to Birthorp on World 2 or World 48 in order to cap on your divine locations, or if you live in a time zone which just makes it unreasonable to be on at that hour, which a lot of people are in that boat, this is the resource dungeon for you because you can cap on your divine locations every single day. Obviously, the divine yew tree is the most efficient, but you can just go for any location which provides XP and a skill that you want, and you can just quick hop until you find one that sounds good to you, and then you're able to cap in just a couple minutes, and there's also a bank deposit box here. It's the next best thing if you cannot be on at reset time. I use this thing every day. It's great, and I highly recommend it if you don't go to World 48 or World 2 for your divine locations already. Number one on this list, could it be anything else? By far the most famous resource dungeon in all of RS. And also, if someone is dungeoneering and they're not specifically going for a chaotic weapon or the charming imp or one of those dungeoneering rewards that you buy, Chances are they're probably going for 85 Dungeoneering so that you can kill Frost Dragons. This is one of the premier mid-tier money-making methods, and some higher-level players also like this money-making method. No, it's not a Slayer task. No, there's no resource gathering or other benefits inside this dungeon other than killing the Frost Dragons, but I had no choice but to put this at number one just because this is the resource dungeon in RS. It's by far the most popular one. Everyone has gone to kill Frost at some point if you have 85 plus DG because it is still 
solid money. No, it's not the amazing, crazy good money it was in years past where it was one of the best money makers in the game, but it's still very solid. And for those mid-tier players that don't have a lot of other options at their disposal yet due to lack of combat stats or gear or whatever, Frost Dragons are an amazing option. And really all you need is a decent melee weapon and some food and protection from magic. Their dragon fire doesn't even hit that hard. So you can kill these and use your yak or use magic note paper or whatever you have make some good money killing the frost dragons and obviously with how difficult it is to find an empty world of frost dragons these are still an incredibly popular way to make some bang that's about all for this video thank you guys for watching let me know what your favorite resource dungeon is personally for me it's definitely that the garage one super nice for capping every day on divine locations also don't forget to leave your comment for what you'd like the next top 10 to be and if i think your comment is a cool one i will take full liberties with it and make a video out of it and you'll be credited for the idea as well finally on a slightly sadder note i did have to let you guys know that i am going back to college as well as playing quite a bit of pickup basketball lately trying to get out of some really bad sitting around the house all day habits and live a healthier lifestyle and due to those two things the quantity of videos is going to suffer a little bit so hopefully we'll get through this and i'll be able to upload more often in the future but i did have to apologize for that but with that being said i'll see you guys next time with whatever i choose to upload next it's going to be a surprise for all of us even me and I'll see you guys then. Farewell.